these robots were gathered while I was living in Brighton, and because I taught at the local art college, many students were kind enough to give me their old robots because they had to clear out their rooms. Others came because I went up to London, became an art student at the Royal College of Art, and became fascinated with the sculptural form. And by that time, I'd gone to the movies and seen all those lovely old films about robots. And there was a day up in London when Concorde was flying over my head, and they were trying to shove this amazing piece of kit into the Science Museum. I pushed it to one side because I desperately needed my cup of coffee. But later in the day, I realized this was the capsule that had taken those guys up to the moon. It was that time, it was a positive time, when we were thinking about the future. And I started to look at robots in a particular way. My studio, as a student of the Royal College, was in the V&A. And I wandered through seven miles of corridor and came across Eduardo Paolozzi's work. He celebrated the whole world of robots. They proved to be his inspiration for his work. And I realized he had his own exhibition called the Crazy Cat Collection. And that began to help me focus on what I might collect and seek from it. And so when I came back to live in Brighton, I honestly expressed the wish to have them around me in my studio. My very first robot was brought to me by my goddaughter who was at infant school in Brighton and it's still here and it's behind me and it still works and amazingly she came down last week to view it and that's the little girl who later came with me to see the launch of Star Wars and later on when they relaunched it in America she was with me in Los Angeles and she didn't know it but Darth Vader came up behind her and began to quietly throttle her. And she looked round and looked into the dark side. She never quite got over it, and neither did I. I celebrate the whole idea of that form of creativity. It's another world. But as Isaac Asimov said, it's a doorway to reality. It's your reality too. Enjoy it. Well, it's very difficult trying to choose your favourite robot because I come across them at different parts of the world and they're given to me by different people and they're very meaningful in that way. However, possibly my favourite robot is one of the first I ever bought and it's Robbie. Dear old Robbie comes from a, a film of the early 1950s. Now, Robbie doesn't have a really cute face. He can hardly walk. In fact, if he did walk, he'd just knock the furniture over. He can't do anything with his arms. But there was something, and I believe it's charm. And strangely, a great many of these characters have that charm. The audience comes away thinking that it's a childlike wonder. And Robbie's an innocent, but he was also good, and he affirmed the belief of Isaac Asimov's three rules of robotics. He was one of the good guys. And he still survives today in a museum just south of Los Angeles. I've always loved machines. I love their sculptural quality. I realized that it's art and design, and that somewhere in the world, somebody's sitting down and producing them. Some artist sits down and does the most beautiful thing. Can you imagine some of these wonderful machines being 10 and 12 foot high? They sparkle, they talk to you, their television sets, their radios, they walk at me, they're my alarm clock. What's not to like? I love it. Sooner or later, I'm going to put them in my drawings. Magazines, newspapers, 
books are going to be entertained by artwork such as that. Beside me, behind me, the spaceship comes from my days when Quentin Blake gave us a lecture. And the Victorians were trying to find a way of sending their huge ocean liners out into space. And they had uh, wonderful ideas. I just took all the propellers off and had mine floating through the sky. And I had those toys around me in my studio. And it seemed an obvious thing to do. This was a very friendly science fiction. Very friendly. Isaac Asimov was always disappointed that his idea of robots was overcome by a general attitude that was, was the general attitude was that robots would destroy the world. His idea was that they were very friendly and we can't do without them. And I take much the same view. I can't do without them either. They have patterns and they have a character and a personality that I put onto a piece of paper. What you see <clears throat> is what I am, really. That's the trick with artwork. When your hobby becomes your work, Many years ago, when this little girl, who has now just left university, she came around to see me, she drew her favourite robot, and she left it for me, and it was Rosie, and it was a housekeeper. And I thought, what a wonderful idea, that you could have a lovely, friendly robot that could look after you. Wouldn't that be nice? I could go to my desk every day, and somebody would bring me coffee, and make me a sandwich, and answer the door, and do the telephone, never argue with me, be endlessly kind. That world is coming. It's not far away. Two weeks ago in Paris, they put on a play. One of the characters was a robot, a little Japanese girl. The owner, the father of that robot, a scientist, had put his image of his daughter on stage. Nobody knew that it was a robot. She was able to interact. She didn't bump into the furniture. She charmed the audience. I've seen it before in some ways when I've been to America and seen these animatronics. It's odd how the atmosphere in the hall changes and people will clap and get up and talk to what they know is a robot but they feel it's very friendly and a kind person to have with them. Once upon a time, we didn't feel that was odd. Now we think it's inevitable. And I would like to be around when my kind and lovely robot is there with a nice, kind voice. I'm also aware in 2001, the movie, that when the guy asks Hal to open the doors, Hal has a mind of his own and decides he's not going to obey. Mm. It comes with a few problems, I admit. But the future is here. You don't have to wait for it. When people say I'm a collector, I can make them laugh. I mean, they laugh at me anyway. But I say, you know, I'm, I'm just never a collector. I never sit out to collect anything. I'm an enthusiast. And I'm enthusiast. The enth I'm enthusiastic about these lovely machines that have decorated my home. And people love to give them to me because that's what I have around me. So when my birthday and Christmas come along, surprise, surprise, I get a robot. And just recently, without a single robot in my home because they're all here, I had visitors from Germany, from Canada and America. And guess what they brought with them? The only robots I have in my house, they've watched just arrived these last couple of weeks. So I think I will amass, I will gather around me robots forever, in one form or another. But I have to say, if you visited my home now, there are no spaces. My home is filled with everything else that I have accumulated over the years. And if I'm doing a particular book, let's say it's penguins, suddenly I have a collection uh, of penguins or bears. And I have to admit that upstairs I have 200 teddy bears. And that's not counting the merchandise that goes with it. So 
will I ever stop collecting? No, probably not. And I think that's what artists do. It's a joyful clutter. Just wait for the next exhibition. It might be furry. I'll be very happy to have my old friends back. It's funny how you miss them. And I come here and I think, oh my goodness, I've forgotten about them. Well, not, not really. But I'm also a little nervous because where am I going to put 200 robots? Maybe there has to be another exhibition.